Hello and welcome to Secret of Vision Family Catch Up Super Chats. Remember that show? Great. Secret Invasion? Yeah, it didn't make me angry at all. I really liked it. Mm -hmm. Were we always intended to cover it the stuff. way that we did, or was that like a surprise one too? No, I, I think that happened as it went. I don't think we were quite expecting it. We knew it was going to be bad, but not that bad. Yeah. Not so bad that the whole world thought it was shit? <laughs> no, I, that was unexpected. Mm -hmm. Well, we may as well start having a little look-see at what your messages were when they came in when we were streaming. Which, by the way, that was like a 10-hour stream, right? We strummed, we strummed a lot. We strummed a lot. We done did, because there was so much to say about the invasion that was so very secret. Oh boy. Anyway. Not secret anymore. God been, knows if the MC is going to deal with it again. Been co oping Kirby games with the wife. Such chill, wholesome fun. We're going through Dreamland 3 currently. I'm usually playing GUI. Sounds mm. pleasant. Kirby is quite is a Goo pleasant. Who's GUI? Is he like Veb? I don't know. I, I don't know, actually. But yeah, Kirby is like a, a very chill, pleasant game. Aside from the occasional, you know, like Lovecraftian stuff. Uh, thoughts on Fallout New Vegas writing and story? I think it shines in the DLC if you've played them. My favorite character is probably Ulysses. Do any of you have one? I have a favorite character, I guess. In New Vegas, it's been a long time. I really, I've always really liked Caesar, or sorry, Kaisar. He's always been interesting. He's so much better than just a typical, ooh, I'm a bad guy villain and I just want power. Uh, I think he's, uh, the way that he looks at the world and his, um, his admiration of a, uh, like seeing a post-apocalyptic world that he's in and sort of comparing that to a much more ancient world and seeing who controlled that world and using it as a parallel to like structure his own civilization, uh, you know, uh, uh, similarly to that, I, th I think, just think it's interesting. Gives a lot of flavor to the faction as well. You know, like a Roman-themed faction. It might seem really silly, but then, you know, you get into it and you hear his explanations, and it's it, it is really neat. Um, so yeah, I'd probably go with him. Uh, though I'd have to think about it. There's a lot that I kind of like along the way, but I really have to sort of think um, more and give a bit more focus and stuff to that. Uh -huh. If I was going to give a more nice. in-depth answer. Um, I haven't played it yet, so <laughs> I don't have I. a favorite character. Really, none of you. Okay. No, but I know I uh, no, I, I don't really know much about that game at all. But I, all I ever hear is that it's the best uh, Fallout since the and you know in the years since since the original games that is better than uh, all the yes. best ones. Um, it is it is regularly touted as the best of the Fallout games. Yes, and for okay. good reason. Uh, it's aged. Yeah, I mean, it's aged a bit in terms of its gameplay, but in terms of all the stuff that you can do in it and just the fun of exploring the world and seeing everything in it, I think it really holds up. The writing is awesome. It's got a great you know, set of characters and different ways to win. Uh, I think there's a lot that the game has going for it. I would okay. highly recommend. Uh, the last time Maria Hill is seen is post-Winter Soldier and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., where she speaks with May about Fury being dead, if I recall correctly. Uh... If you had asked me when we last see Hill, I would just be like, probably an Endgame? Was she in the background or something? Uh, I don't even think... She, I'm not sure if she was at the uh, the funeral. Fury was, but I don't know if she was. Oh, wait, I guess we saw... Well, we didn't see her in Far From Home. We saw a scroll version. Mm. Yeah. So it has been a while. Yeah. The only reason I ask is because I've been replaying. That's all it said. Oh, replying? What the context is for that, I'm afraid. Uh, maybe replaying. for the, uh, replaying, the right? Fallout Vegas. New Vegas. Could be, yeah, yeah. He's been replaying. Uh, please look up the movie Smoking Causes Coughing. Why? No. I mean, I've never heard of it. I haven't either. I've heard of um, a movie with uh, Harvey Dent about smoking. Stop smoking or something. Uh, we released the general release in British cinemas. Umar Fate Tuso. Is that Smoking Causes Coughing? Is a French comedy anthology film. Okay. You remember, they have the Tobacco Force. I got no clue what this is. It's unusual. 
Um, yeah, no I have, flu. I have quarter black Garrett on EFAP, you massives. Also high rags. Hello. Uh, yeah, maybe sometime. Still plenty of people who haven't maybe. had gas to, at all yet from uh, the FNT sphere. Yeah. So who knows? Hello and hi, Rags. Hello. Rags, have you ever had to poop in the woods? Technically, that would mean um, you did it with the door open. Yeah, I've had to poo in the woods. The door has indeed been wide open. I don't know about that. Question for the crew. What inanimate object would you make a horror movie about Blumhouse style? Inanimate object? Like, the inanimate, inanimate object, object is the thing that's chasing like somebody? Cursed or possessed, or is it some kind of ancient artifact that does a thing? I think, I almost feel like it implies some common household object, you know? Um... Like, the idea of, object. I don't know, like a, uh, like a stapler or a, um... I don't know, what like if... curtains or something. <laughs> Like a maybe, maybe like a piece of playground equipment, like a slide, and but the slide like takes you to places as you go through, like one of those swirly slides, and it and it's like all covered like a tunnel, and you start going down, and then by the time you reach the end, it like transports you to another world, like a demon world or just some random place on Earth mm. or something like that, and like I've there's no reports of missing children, maybe. Oh, so it'd be like a playground that's haunted. Yeah, maybe like a haunted playground. That could be neat. Yeah. yeah. Now what I'm thinking is like a bunch of uh, electrical cables like coalescing into some kind of monster that can change its form. So like you imagine that it's, I don't know, like a bunch of computer cables and, and stuff like that. Plugs, extension cords uh, that can like manifest in these really strange and creepy ways. That seems like a, something that could be interesting visually. I don't know what the logic would be behind it, but, you know. Spooky typewriter would be like, there are errors in the scripts people write out that they didn't write, and it's just the voices of the dead Ominous. trying to get through the typewriter. Yeah. Maybe there's an evil soul trapped in the typewriter, and it can only get free if it manages to, like, have certain things get typed out. Like, you have to type out the, like, the spell words that release it from its uh, imprisonment. And it's trying to get everybody to do that, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. There, there's a lot of ideas. There's a lot of ideas you could do and try. Bobby song is in the credits, but Nicki Minaj vision. Secret invasion? All right. Sweet Christy Critters. Why are we talking about secret invasion when, um, uh, wait, what's coming out? Nothing anymore. Nothing's coming out anymore. It's all getting pushed. What do you mean? Except uh, Marvel's cool. Except great. for video games. Video games. I'm talking about Lots of video kids. games. I'm not talking about kids' products right now. I'm talking about adult stuff, okay? Yeah. Ah, right, okay. Wasn't this the big Marvel crossover event in the comics? A waste not to have other characters and a good story. Super Scrolls versus Avengers and X-Men. Um, so, yeah, that's something that you guys are going to get used to when it comes to Marvel. The only time that it's ever going to be a, a big crossover is Avengers. Even if they're adapting something that's from... Well, except for Civil War, I suppose. But, yep. like, I, w I wouldn't have any expectations anymore no. that if they said, yeah, we're going to adapt this crossover, that you're actually going to get that. Secret Invasion should have been... If you were going to do it right, it should have been an Avengers movie. And it should have been something that was ramped up to for, like, one or two phases. Um, but instead, I, th I think it was probably doomed as soon as it was announced as, like, a television project. Because there was just no way. There was no way that it was going to be as big a scope as the comics is. I mean, even Civil War couldn't be as big as the scope of the comics, and that, that was a big scope one for an, uh, a Marvel movie. But yeah, uh, now, now it's gone. Now you can never do Secret Invasion again. It's over. Which, even in the good era of Marvel, the, the stories are getting wasted as well from the story. So much more. <laughs> yeah. Bye bye. Yep. You. Um, from comics after Disney purchase, no royalties. All right. Oh, you mean, um, well, something that you probably notice is in the credits now, they don't even do what they used to, where they would credit the creator of the uh, character. Now it's just based on the Marvel comics. So it used to be, you know, Captain America, uh, based on Captain America by the writer and the artist who originally created them. And now we're not even doing that. At least DC still does that. That's nice. Any of you taking a stupid pill with breakfast? Uh -uh. Well, wait. Um, sorry. Would you? 
would you want to be if you like with all the DC and Marvel stuff that's been terrible? Would you want to be credited if you um, had made the character? I mean, at the very least, you're still being credited for the character, even if it, it yeah, like I don't your think people original would idea. that you blame for the story because I, it entitles I, you to something. You know? Yeah, I would want to be credited, but like based off of the character made by. Or yes, based of course, off, not based yeah, on not the story. Like, yeah. Yeah, but like, as long as they... for instance, you know, the Secret Invasion one, it shouldn't have said based on the Marvel comics. It should have said based on Secret Invasion by, and you know, if we're being if we're being as fair as we really ought to be, it probably shouldn't just include the writer and the artist. It should also include the inker and the uh, the editors. Like, if I th I think that would be more fair. The fact that based we've got the, the writer and the artist projects by da da da. Inker, well, just you know, credit writer, everybody who worked yeah. on it, not. Because I'm, you know, for a long time, artists didn't get credited. Now artists do get credited along with the writer, but that's not everybody who works on these projects. Um, it's, and, you know, color, uh, inkers, and, um, you know, depending on whether you've got pencil or if the artist also does the inks. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of roles that go into these things. But now we don't even get the writer and the artist anymore. Now it's just based on Marvel Comics, which is super lame. That's incredibly lame. Hi, Rex. Hello. Hi, Rags. Hello. Scroll check, Rags. Use the word literally incorrectly. If Rags doesn't get annoyed, he's a scroll. Also, hi, Rags. Ah, if someone <laughs> uses the word literally wrong again, my head will explode. You better get used to it. It's, you don't know uh, that that's impossible. <laughs> Maybe some they'll cast some spell. You don't know. Magic mm, is yes. a real thing, Rags. All around us, it binds us. It That's certainly right. is the, Star Wars. the universe itself is magical, ain't it? Would the MCU be improved if Loki never happened? Loki just was just being fooled by scrolls. Oh, you mean the television show? Yes. If you get rid of Loki you in general, for, no, you hurt the yeah. MCU. You can say that for pretty much every project in Phase Four and Five. Pretty yeah, much. I don't. I don't except for no way home and even then it's like you know some tweaks wouldn't well they've uh, damaged stuff with the bad. spells and everything haven't they but they've added stuff uh, as well yeah. so yeah but i mean you, the amount every single project has done some damage every single one uh hey massives rags whatever happened to your mando video been catching up and i'm noticing you mentioning it less and less is it still happening uh eventually yeah i have something else uh that i'll be doing uh, instead, and some other things. I've been given some thought to how I'm going to sort of structure my content and what I'm going to do, uh, but, yeah. It, it'll it probably happen, just later. Though, mm -hmm. Ahsoka is fucking tempting. Any of you taking a... Oh, wait, I read that one. Lord Longbong of Mildrington Abbey, is there any good chance for Kong Fap, of Peter Jackson's Long Kong? When there's less going on, it'd be a movie fap for the ages. Yes, hello, mm. Waxies. Riches for the good boy. Yeah, hello. Oh, indeed. And yes, probably when there's less going on. It wouldn't be when there's lots going on, because the lots yep. going on would preclude anything else from going on. That's True. How it goes. We We're heading into October any, uh, now, yeah. the busiest month of EFAP's existence. True. At least mine, anyway. My goodness, the Halloween arc has been difficult to get organized this time around, but we're still mm. doing it, still keeping it up. Uh, memory transplant equals Akira meme. Leave me alone, ping. All right. Seen that yet? But maybe nope. No, not yet. Isn't part of Rogue from X Men story how messed up her mind gets when she absorbs someone else's mind? Yeah. So that's it's one of the interesting things about X Men is that usually there's some caveat to their power. Like there'll be some utility, but there'll also be some detriment. So obviously she is hyper powerful. But, I mean, she can't touch anybody, otherwise she might kill them. Uh, and, yeah, there's also those aspects as well. Um, it's... Because I mean, that would have been brought up in relation to how Secret Invasion just completely foregoes the opportunity to explore some of the more existential aspects of what it would mean to have, a, like, a second mind in your head. Um, and how difficult it would be to work through that. It, it, like, they just treat it like, oh, yep, yeah, you just get, uh, it's like all the information just gets downloaded and it's all cool, and it doesn't change anything about your beliefs or your values or your life. <laughs> like, whether or not you even believe yourself to be who you think you are, you know? You should, uh, you guys should really play, uh, Hellblade Send It Sacrifice. That would be, uh, I'd be curious to see what you think of it and what they do in okay. it. Okay. I'll have to, yeah. 
Uh, what the fuck? Where's Gothic Phone? EFAP has no content, I swear. Well, we did one. We and did, that's yeah. right. There you go. That's, that's right. right. We had a good old time. It was fun. Uh, hey, Masters, have you played the Dishonored games? If so, would you recommend them? I've played... I, I barely played the first, but I played the second one through. Um, I think twice. I can't remember if I finished my uh, run with... What's her name? Emily? Or whatever? Yeah, um, Emily's... But I, uh, by the way, I way preferred playing Corvo. Um, but the, uh, I would highly recommend it. Yes, I thoroughly enjoyed my time with that game. I thought it was very fun. I like the art style, uh, a lot of the powers, the stealth in it. Uh, I, I would highly recommend Dishonored 2. I played the first Dishonored, and I really like it. Definitely recommend it. Uh, haven't, I only played a couple hours of Dishonored 2, so I can't speak to that one. But I hear it's really good from rags and other people. Yeah. Um, I, I'm barely familiar with Dishonored, but it wants me to play it at some point, so I probably will. Uh, while I get where Sindri is coming from, can anyone except Odin really be blamed for what happened? Also, hi rags, scritches for the good boy. Hello! Wait, what? Sindri is not going to be uh, very, very rational by the time Brock's dead. He's thinking very aggressively about how every event that has come up to this point has people making certain decisions they didn't have to make that if they had made slightly different ones, Brock would be okay sort of thing, and so he's just gonna be kind of like, don't fucking talk to me. Hates everybody. That old disenfranchised dwarf man. Um, but yes, Odin is ultimately to blame, hence Sindri's help in fucking annihilating Asgard. Uh... But as as he says, like he still feels completely used by the main characters. And that they mm. didn't really do much of a job to prevent a lot of what happened, so that they just weren't too considerate of uh their needs. Yeah, which you Which know, is kind of true, uh for If Sindri. you replay them, yeah. yeah you, okay. Kratos it's it's played for laughs for the first, you know, portion of all of it. But like Kratos is kind of an asshole too. Injury, but he's an asshole to everybody. Like that's kind of how he goes. Mm -hmm. But while he comes to respect Brock a lot, he doesn't quite do that for uh, Sindri. No, and you know they they give a lot those two throughout those two games. Mm hmm. And it doesn't end well for either of them. Nope. Honestly, the scrolls seem so garbage at their jobs that our everyday intelligence services would have found and drone struck them. Oh, easy. They're, they're shit. Um, the, the only reason they get away with the whole 15 years thing is because that was dropped suddenly. Like, if they actually were there for the past 15 years, we would have found them out easily. Mm -hmm. I don't even believe that uh, Rody would have passed, like, Tony's checks of just talking to him, you know? Probably not. In the Kirby anime, King DDD's hobby is just bird watching. Oh. Ah, good lad. This is Justice League. Think about it. Well, that says. All right. Hmm. This is Justice League. Think about it. I mean, it's depressing. Uh, if you guys could give the Bob movie a rating out of ten, what would it? Would you give it? I thought it was like a five out of ten, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Give the what movie? Sorry. Bobby movie. Uh. uh it's really like two? for comedy. It's like not funny at all, and then obviously the plot is completely disastrous. And any points it makes thematically, it works to destroy them itself without even realizing. So. Pretty broken movie, all in all. There's some stuff to appreciate, some even bits of story that kind of, like, are okay. Like, mainly all the parts about her wanting to be human, I think mostly are okay. There's a, there's a couple of, like, three scenes-ish where there's stuff relating to that only, and it's much more genuine. Could have been what the film was about, to be honest with you. And, um, so I'd probably sit on, like, a three, yeah. Uh, I don't know, but, I yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> I I've forgotten a lot of that movie at this point, so yeah, I don't know. I was talking with a sixteen year old who's working in as an intern at work and we were talking about films and he didn't know who Robin William was Williams was. Uh, really? He then said he'd seen Jumanji, but he was talking about the one with the rock. That was a sad day. Oh. That I um, I would really like to rewatch the Robin Williams Jumanji movie because I watched it as a kid and I would like to see how it holds up because I really watched I liked it as a kid, so Gonna, it happens, generations move on, but I feel like 
you're working in the film industry, if, if that's what the implication of that super chat was, and you probably know who Robin Williams is. Like you've been exposed to Robin Williams at least once. Like not seeing Goodwill Hunting, you know? Or uh Well the implication is uh, that he uh, has seen films with him, but he's still not that familiar with him. Oh, okay. I recommend a good show to watch is Gotham. It's good until the final season, which is just Batwoman Plus. Um, oh, that's a shame. Or maybe that it's amazing. I don't know. I feel like I've heard mixed things about that show. I've seen a lot of appreciation for the villains in it. Okay. But yeah, I don't know. I, haven't, I, I don't know enough to say anything. This show is literally a worse Fallout 4. Horrid. Wow. I'm convinced the people defending the show aren't paying attention to the screen. They're probably watching a TikTok with this on in the background. I saw someone saying that Ahsoka is the perfect uh, phone mo uh, phone show because there's loads yeah, of mean, gaps of nothing and you are only yeah. have to look up every once in a while to see the action scenes and, and mostly follow. Not much happening. Again, you, you trim out those big pauses, you cut the episodes in half. Imagine someone referring like, to your TV show as perfect for watching on a phone. Movie, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> oh boy. That would suck. Hi, Doggo. Defend Halo, Hello. a TV show from a Frogo critique. Oh boy. Uh, hmm. What would be a, what would be an interesting one to see if you could? <laughs> I've already thought of one that you could ask me that you'd mentioned before. Uh, uh, offline chats, but there was a lot of things to do, but sometimes it's weird to just be like... <laughs> <laughs> name it it's, 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 uh, it would be the folk okay here, here's a specific one uh so at the end of the season john halo goes you know to to uh where they're putting the keystones together to uh find the map to halo and they go there and they fight and then they basically nearly get killed and then john halo lets himself be killed by presumably atriox to then have his body taken over by cortana where she annihilates all of the elites. Um, and then she also brings down the pelican that they came from, which is hyper effective against the Covenant. Why didn't she just do that earlier when they were in trouble? Why did she wait until then to bring the pelican down to save them? I think something that you're doing is I think you're um, sort of hyper focusing on combat logic when the point of uh, the yeah. movie or the show, it isn't really about that. Halo isn't uh, about yeah, Halo isn't about, it's not about combat. combat. No, it's, it's, not. it's about the the thematics of what it's trying to say about um, his decision to let go of his it's, life yes, to be a real hero. Uh, after he it's about the, the thematics of how the from. innate qualities of humanity are special when an artificial intelligence construct takes over his consciousness, deletes his humanity, and saves the day. Uh, oh yeah, you're you're really good at this. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I really no, like it's, that show. It's, uh, it's, great. It's it's yeah I'm 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 really looking forward to season two, I'm sure it'll be great. I'm sure it'll be improved dramatically. Yay. The thing is that nobody's looking forward to that show. Like people Nobody already forgot. It. People already the forgot last about it. Came out, you know, Arcane is, exists. Like, and and of course, there's other adaptations coming out that are probably going to be more interesting to people, like Fallout. Um, I mean, it, it it's it's remarkable at this point that Halo as an IP is um worth less than, like, relatively new IPs from smaller studios. Like, Ghost of Tsushima is probably worth more than Halo in terms of its potential for making money, uh, both as video games and adaptation. Yeah, could you imagine and it's, like, a, brand um, new. It uh, just came know, like, out, you know? If, if you brought out, like, Halo, uh, I don't know, Revelations versus <laughs> Bloodborne 2. Oh, Bloodborne 2 would kick its ass. Yeah, it would um, be Everybody would be talking about Bloodborne. I, it, like I said, I, it, like, you know, relatively new franchises that barely even could be counted as franchises that have one installment at this point are, are more popular and have greater potential for profitability and popularity than uh, Halo. They've driven that franchise into the dirt. It's incredible. Um, a shilling for the scroll, aka BS meter. Thank you very much. Remember, countries have no borders? I'm not even... Did that come up in episode one? It probably uh, would I don't know come if it up does. when we talked about, like, the scrolls <laughs> being here. How are they able to... Because throughout the show, the scrolls and pretty much everyone's able to move from country to country as they please. Yeah, no one gives When a that's shit. actually a big deal, you need to have, like, 
uh, you, it's difficult to do that. You need to have a lot, you know, behind you in order to engineer this ability for you to take advantage of all that stuff. So, yeah, Marvel's not, uh... billing for Jackson is like in Foster's Home, where Blue is making a movie and spends three million on one scene for Tom Hanks with a bucket on his head. I don't know that reference. All right. Uh, my favorite scene was Fury. Do you know the, the show or the episode? Neither. Oh, you never heard of Foster's Home for Imaginary uh, uh, Friends? Oh, uh, have you not heard of that show? Nope. That's interesting. It was a show on Cartoon Network. Hmm, that's weird, because I watched a lot of Cartoon Network. That was mid-2000s, so... Might have been... It, like, that was after, you know, Dex's Lab and Ed, Ed and Eddie and stuff. All right, I might have stopped watching by then, yeah. Maybe. Uh, my favorite scene was Fury leaving Moscow in the subway at 2 a.m. And he jumps by, he's jumped by two MAGA hat wearing psychers. We don't appreciate your kind around here. Well, that's just, uh, they worked for, what was it, uh, Olivia Coleman, right? Or whatever. Yes, that was. He's deliberately uh, trying to get himself caught by her so that he could plant his little listening device. <laughs> it all made complete yeah, sense. Yeah, sure. I like the idea that that was cope after the fact. If only you knew how bad things really are. Yeah, I mean, most people who are still, like, chill with the MCU don't even watch some of this stuff. You don't even know. No, I, I, you know, people didn't like Secret Invasion, and I don't know, man, I feel like the Marvels is doomed to make less than even Ant-Man. I could be wrong, but, like, I would be really surprised if it made as much money as Ant-Man. Oi, Fringy, which animal has the most Australian name? The Kookaburra, Nabalek, Wobbegong, Western Gobbleguts, or Padamelon? Padamelon? So, those, those last four are made up. Uh, at least, it's, maybe they're not, but like, I've not heard of any of those things before. Kookaburra is a pretty Australian sounding name. Uh, Quokka uh, is, is a pretty Australian name. Um... Hmm, what, what other... I mean, Wallaby is pretty Australian. Kangaroo and Wallaby. I mean, they seem like boring choices because they're so well-known. But, you know, Kangaroo and Wallaby are pretty uh, Australian-sounding animal names. Um, mm. Hmm, I'm just trying to think of, like, if there would be any other animal that would be com competitive with, uh, in terms of Australia. Kookaburra might be at the top of the list. Um, but, yeah, there you go. There's a sampling, I guess. <laughs> Greetings, you massives. Thanks for keeping me entertained while I'm at work all these years. Also, hi, Rex. Hello. No problem. Uh, Semiostrom Ceruti, the porpoise with the chinny chin chin. All right. Something to think about, really. Yeah. Always something to think about. Scroll check Jedi Brooks. Make sure to keep checking. Be vigilant. Oh, we'll know. Gotta. This Scrolls is the are really now. bad at keeping themselves concealed. Yeah. So what happens if a scroll turns into Wong or Doctor Strange? Would they have all the magical magical knowledge of the Sorcerer Supreme? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know if they used that machine, they would. But without that, I guess they only get uh, recent memories or something. Which, you know if that's enough to make them semi-competent sorcerers? That would actually like be a strategy if Earth were under attack. So like, get all the scrolls to copy Doctor Strange so that if, if that's how it works, yeah. Yeah. And it would be like ethical of him to step into that machine so that they can all grab his like hyper super memories so that they can all be as competent as him with magic. Yeah, interesting world, I'm sure. Wouldn't ruin everything and make everything shit. Um Shape Shifting Elves from Asgard and She Hulk. Yeah, it's it's funny how they just drop that in in the comedy show, and then they try to make a whole drama about it. Yep, lol. Restarted GTA Five recently. Main story's pretty decent, but the radio and NPC commentary is still super on point today, nearly ten years later. I hope GTA Six has half as good as writing. Love you guys. Hi, Rex. Well, Hell, thank you. Hey. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, what I would the thing is, uh, Dan Hauser isn't there anymore, and he was the lead writer on basically every Rockstar game. So with that in mind, I feel like it's it's inevitable that there has to be like a change in the 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 tone and the the style of writing, um, unless it gets like replicated. But yeah, I imagine that there'll be a change. But hopefully, GTA Six is still super good and you know funny and amusing and sardonic. Yeah, 
So what exactly counts as a literal Xeno slash existential threat to the writers of these shows? SI, Secret Invasion, I guess, is an organized mass of the things with the ethics of deliberate invaders. Who is evil in this world according to the writers? Uh, they don't have an answer to that question. The answer is it's complicated, even though it's really not, because yeah, like, really Rabbit isn't. was trying to nuke Earth <laughs> because one person made a promise, well, two people, I guess, because Captain Marvel doesn't escape culpability, two people made a promise and essentially, like, turned them into slaves uh, and then didn't follow through, and therefore all of Earth deserves to be wiped off the face of the Earth. It's yeah, insane. The it's idea that it would even be presented too. morally gray. Yep, it's like, but the show wants to treat it like it's, there's some middle ground or that there's an aspect to Gravik that's reasonable, but he is wholly unreasonable. He's a, yeah, he's a it's, psychopath. He's insane. As far as I'm concerned, he's just looking for a terrible reason to enact his bloodlust. Yeah, he hates humanity. Yeah, he seems to hate humanity. And he's like, I like dogs, while also wanting to nuke Earth and kill all the dogs, yeah. too. I mean, kill everything. Well, like, we, we don't like he, him. He shits sure. on humanity for being destructive, which, you know, fair enough. But, like, you're, you're trying to blow the whole fucking place up. <laughs> like, that's, that's way more destructive. Yeah, well, like, you, you should know, have found him oh, a home. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, one guy should have found him, and all these people who don't know anything about you, whose, you know, whose world you've subverted, like, their and democratic Fury did, like, media. president gave a hateful speech. No shit, yeah, I mean, he did. After he nearly got assassinated by shape-shifting aliens. Who had taken control to, uh, of his, like, primary yeah. advisor without who, his knowledge. Exactly. And who have subverted other governments and other institutions around the world and sought to end the world. It's, it's just crazy. And part of the problem is that we just don't see many good scrolls. We only ever see the ones that are with Gravik, who I guess are chill with this. Amelia um, Clark, she's great. Oh, yeah. What, she's responsible. I mean, she's got like the blood of thousands on her hands. It, it seems like she was barely even motivated by a desire to, like, help Earth or save humanity, but just revenge. Yeah, power, power trip. And power, which she has now acquired a lot of, and if the Avengers find out, they would need to... Wow. The, the Avengers as they exist now probably wouldn't be very wary at all. They'd be like, oh, that's awesome. Really it's cool, so yeah. cool that you stole everybody's powers, and we don't know whether or not you have any allegiance to Earth at all, but, you know, whatever. Also, you you belong in prison. Also, yeah, whatever. you you were that's still it. part of this team. Yeah, you, you made the decision you to what have entailed. that bomb explode, yeah. Exactly, you were part of that. If Fury's been in space for years, then the risk of incursion has immensely increased since Gamora has been here for years now. Mom's world building sucks. <laughs> yep. Gamora. <laughs> yep, she is a constant source of And also, for some, I mean, surely America as well. Mm -hmm. Chavez, not the country. <laughs> Um, I haven't played much stealth games, and the setting seems interesting. Also, play Little Nightmares and High Rags. Hello. Oh, that was about... Uh, I might forget the name. The stealth game. Just talking about Dishonored. Everything. Yeah. Dishonored. Oh yeah, Dishonored's like a really cool steampunk setting. It's got an awesome art style. It has a very cool art style, and the technology and everything in it looks awesome. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people Super recommend cool Little art. Nightmares. Um, the news broadcast was before the council where he agreed to start World War Three. Yeah, we had a brief like timeline flame with the uh, the Fox News presenter man. <laughs> uh, Robert Meyer Burnett. No, what was it called? What was it called? It wasn't. It wasn't Fox News. It was something else. No, but Damn, I can't remember. That <laughs> I don't of course. Can remember it now. <laughs> Robert Meyer Burnett says authenticity is the currency of the future. Yet he said before Secret Invasion came out that the script was brilliant. I can't say I believe him with what we got on screen. The thing is, don't call is, it till it's out. Well, it's not that. It's the people can Everything have their changes. perspectives. Authenticity is not related to. Being like correct, necessarily quality. truth of of like the quality, yeah. Like it's it's more so that he's telling you exactly what he got from the thing. Which, by the way, I believe one hundred percent that he is authentic. He uh, oh, he's yeah. taken plenty of slings and arrows, like many of the people in our spheres, for opinions that they know. This is not going to make the audience happy, but here we go anyway. We've done it a lot, and uh, it's okay. Like uh, it's it's, it's alright if if it turns out that you know you're like uh, that that's completely wrong. Well, that doesn't match up with what I've seen. As long as you you detect a sense that the people who are saying it are doing it because they want to tell you how they actually feel, not that they want to achieve some other goal, be it monetary or, uh, you know, get into a particular crowd or something like like pandering. 
Um, because I think he's right. I think I think that he's on point that people are gonna more thoroughly desire the core human sort of sources for information, whether or not they agree. They just wanna get that like give me what's coming out of that thought brain of yours directly. Um that's the thing, Robert likes plenty of things that are cringe, and that's okay. Okay. Uh, been rewatching Squid Game and showing it to my dad for the first time, and he's it's been good rat. Episode 6 is up next, I can't wait to see his response to it. Also wonder what he'll think of Episode 7, Hi Rags. Hello! Yes, uh, that was a very, very powerful payoff, that one. Yeah, six. best episode Bobble of the show. Game. Um, also, how well do you think Mr. Nano Machine's son's power level holds up in the MCU? Could he take on unstoned Thanos? Wait. I don't know enough we're... about that game to really... Oh, say. so Armstrong... Oh, that the, specifically Armstrong. I was wondering if they were saying, like, Armstrong equivalent. I was thinking, who is the Armstrong equivalent in the MCU? But, uh, Senator Armstrong is really strong. Uh, he could probably beat Thanos without the stones. Hmm. With the stones, it would be a bit harder, but he'd, he'd give it as... Yeah, I mean, at that point, it would also be asking if Raiden could, uh... Oh, sorry, Raiden. Raiden is... If Raiden could, uh, beat him. Raiden. Well, because, not to be confused, R Raiden from Metal Gear Solid and Raiden from Mortal Kombat. So is all the scroll... Raiden could probably beat him. Is all the scroll blood going to be policed? What that means. Oh, I mean, like, yeah, I don't well, know. Well, just the idea that, you know, using the blood sampling, you can figure out who's a scroll and who's not. So, like, if they set up checkpoints, it's like, all right, just prick your finger. Let's oh, see if you're a human well, or a scroll. Maybe that's what they mean. If that's what they mean, then yeah, that would solve the scroll problem immediately. I, I don't know why. I mean, it's, it's, again, it's like when, when what's her name cut the guy's finger off and then it turned back into a scroll. I, but, but they were inconsistent. Some people's blood was red. And some people's blood was, uh, purple. It was, it was weird. They couldn't make up their mind. Uh, hey Massives. I saw your Reddit post, Mauler, about your Ant-Man video. You mentioned how there are some people who've been complaining about the lack of videos. I wanted to take this time to show my appreciation for the hard work you put in both your videos and EFAP. It baffles me how people can see the amount of EFAP content and just ignore it while claiming you don't make videos. As much as you did, because you don't shit out a terrible video every month. Anyway, sorry for the rant. Thanks again so much for the awesome content, Muller, and of course, Rags and Fringy too. Oh, thank, thank you. you. That's very kind. Thanks. Um, yeah, a lot of people don't know that Mula or, or EFAP or any extended stuff or bonus stuff even exists. So, as far as they're concerned, they're only getting mainline videos on my channel, and thus if it's... I think the window's about two months, maybe three, and then they start getting very, very restless. Um, by the time the Ant-Man video was coming out, I was getting many comments every day being like, can't believe he left YouTube, can't believe he doesn't do anything anymore, and it's like, <laughs> hello? I'm like streaming every day on different channels, but okay. And constantly updating, but like, people don't look for it, they just want to get the video, and if they don't see it, there's that sense of just declaring it's not happening might get you closer to it happening. Uh, which, you know, it, it did happen eventually, but... I got I got another, what, two months before I've put out another video before people are going to start getting mad again. That's That's the cycle. Mm -hmm. Um, but thank you. I'm late to this EFAP. Is there a reason the scrolls didn't move to the planet Thanos retired on in Endgame? A planet Captain Marvel and the Avengers know about. A planet Rhodey um, has Rodis. been to. The yes. writers forgot. Uh, oh yeah, yeah and Rhodey the reason went is, there. Yeah. <laughs> the, the reason is that the writers didn't. Big ol' whoopsie. They forgot. The, it they kind forgot. of just throws a spanner in the whole fucking story that they want to tell. Yeah. If you want to see a great show about the paranoia and danger of shapeshifters, I'd recommend Deep Space Nine, only a small part of a much larger story in the show, and yet it's handled so much better than here. I think if you take any sci-fi show, probably any, I'm not even kidding, and take the episode where they deal with shapeshifters, because most sci-fi shows will eventually do that in some way, shape, or form, it's probably better than Secret Invasion. Secret Invasion was catastrophically shit. Yes. Uh, Sekiro when? I will keep asking. At some point. Not sure when, but at some point. Scroll roadie, scrody. Yeah, pretty much. Greetings, you massives. Would you let Brie Larson sit upon you? If yes, would you still do it even if you had to listen to her whine about feminism the whole time? You ask some interesting questions. You use money to ask some very interesting questions, you know? Uh... No, I wouldn't let her do that, no. That seems weird. 
Probably not. It does seem odd. Yes, YouTube tried censoring my message. PPS, hi, rags. Hello. Uh, that makes sense that they would, they would do that. YouTube censored way less than that. In fact, I was playing Dead by Daylight, and um, I wanted to tell another player they sucked ass, and it fucking bleeped out sucked and ass. And I was like, sucked? I can't say sucked? Is, is, is that too aggressive these days? <laughs> like, it's, uh, it's not a world I like. I want to go back to what everything was like. One of the ones that I found odd was um, in Battlefield V. Um, I, I noticed that uh, when we were at Aerodrome, and if you spawn as the Germans on Aerodrome, uh, once I said, we need to capture C pronto. And his C is really important. If the, if the Germans can capture Chesa on that map, it's, it's advantageous for him. So we need to capture C pronto. And pronto was censored. I have no idea. That makes sense. Probably I don't know. Yeah. I... No clue. I don't know. Brody would tell Captain America his best friend. Hmm. Feels like a incomplete thought. A scroll could pretend to be Scarlet Witch and enslave a whole town. Wait. Yeah, she just, she's a regular one just does that, but... Mm -hmm. I don't know if you get her power, if you copy her biology, maybe. Well, I, it seems like that's not the case, but now it may well be that <laughs> uh, Gaia has that ability too. I mean, how is she not the most overpowered dramatically? And he, in a universe that already had several overpowered characters, to be... To be Captain Marvel power plus more than that? I mean, come on. What the fuck were they thinking? What were they actually thinking? And they put her against another one of those, and she just beats him. So there were two, and she just yeah. wins for some reason. Why didn't he heal? Why know. wasn't he just better? Cause Why wasn't he probably... strong enough to just withstand the blast? He just feels like he's a way better fighter to me. Given well, and, and he had well, a longer familiarity with this stuff. He'd been... I just, it, it just yeah, she just got it moments before, and she seems to be an expert at it. She just yells at him and seconds. boops his chest open. That's it. Okay. Yeah. A bit lame, but you know, whatever. None of the laundry list of issues, I guess, that was not as far down. Um, did you guys know that Call of Duty has a Marvel-style opening credits, but it only shows cutscenes from COD, World War II, to Modern Warfare 2, 2022? Call of Duty has like a a, a Marvel Studios opening with does, footage does it do from the, the Call like, of Duty game. Like the flapping pages, but they're all <laughs> clips from <laughs> Call of but Duty. Well. I find it I find it interesting that they said that it only starts from World War Two. That means that they're excluding their best fucking games, <laughs> like mm. all of the best games before that. That means not none of the original Modern Warfare, none of the earlier Black Ops games. It excludes all of their best games <laughs> by the sounds of it. That's really awkward. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that, though. If Metroid were to get a movie, do you think it would be, or should be, animated or live action? Also, high ranks. Animated. Uh, I mean, I could go either way on yeah, that one. I'm happy one. on both. Um, I, it could be either live action or animated, yeah. I feel like uh, it really lends itself well to both, and that you can, you can yeah. do some great stuff with both. Just don't cheap out, don't fuck it up. In fact, don't make it. <laughs> I really well, like animated stuff in general, and I would just like to see more of them. I think you can do a lot stylistically, just with the aesthetic of it. And um, you absolutely I don't know, to can. me, it just seems, especially because it's a video game. I think that you could do a lot of neat stuff with, you know, animated sort of style to it, and you could have well, you know, all sorts we've talked of different. About it, you can go big but, on uh, all the critters and the environments and stuff because it's so kind of fantastical. It, I mean, it, we've we've talked about it, but Halo could have, and honestly, at this point, should have been animated especially if they were that fixated on making sure that you can see, like, Master Chief's face. Uh, yeah, I mean, if... Yeah, if it was, like, an animation, you can, you, you're you just going to get away with that better, just having him in, with his helmet on all the time. Even though also, there's no reason you couldn't get away with it. And, and it's easier but to also the having scope. more combat in action, too. Yep. And also, you know, given that it is a massive sci-fi universe with, like, big spectacles and crazy action and everything not to say that it's cheap to create that in animation it's just that the kind of scope that you can achieve in animation is like insane I mean, uh especially if Arcane they spend as much action. money yeah well i it's hard I, I feel like it would have to look worse if it was made with the same amount of money 
Um, it would just be hard to like create a seamless sort of looking world. There'd be certain shots where it's like, oh, that green screen looks rough, or like, oh, that didn't animate so great compared to you know a a, a very cohesive animation, you know, like art style. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you guys were talking about the wallets, I couldn't stop hearing Man Ray and Patrick's convo. Lol. Also, Rags, my ex was a chiropractor and told me. Uh, wallets in back pocket can misalign your spine. Interesting. Good nice. Uh, Scrolls in Russia doesn't even need much justifying. It's a big country with plenty of room for citizens who can be useful to the right people. But nah, unsupervised uranium is why they wrote. That, I can't believe they went with that. Like, there's a bunch of uh, power plants, the, the nuclear plants that aren't like nobody cares about. Nobody knows where they are. It's like, uh, what? Okay. <laughs> it's like, sometimes you just hear that and you're just like, fuck off, fine, whatever. It's, mm. Nobody cares anymore. Um, amateurs talk strategy, professionals talk logistics. The military truism also applies to writing IMO. Red flag when writer treats the question, how do they eat like a visu vision ruining problem? There's so many easy yeah, solutions to a lot of these as well. Of you know, if your explanation of the world takes you out of the world, I don't know. Um, well, I think I think the comment speaks to the question of when you are confronted with something that you know is like, hmm, that might be a problem. Maybe I need an answer to that. And your instinctive response is, fuck it. It's like, yeah, that's, that's not that's not good attitude <laughs> to, to have as a as a writer. It's not a good attitude to have when creating something, just saying, fuck it, it's when some, it's a little bit challenging. It comes in degrees, right? Like uh, Quantum Mania. Why we're we're sitting with good old uh, Loveness and Peyton Reed, and they're like, "Listen, they they can't breathe. Fuck it." And we're like, "Okay, but what if as soon as they land, they're like struggling to breathe? They're clearly dying, and then just some gross creaturey thing climbs onto them and into their mouth, and they start being able to breathe. And we find out later that just everything there's a symbiotic relationship between all the organisms down there that they can, you know, it's something gross like that. And it's like that sounds really convenient. It's like yes." And it would be ridiculous. But it's better than nothing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, why don't you just invent something dumb? Why do you just give up? Why, like, Instead I of saying, I don't know. Because <laughs> of course the Quantumania suits was the best idea. Um, and you could have introduced them. You could have had it being like, I've invented this telescope. Um, to get it fully running, we're going to need to do some closer visits. And that could be what triggers uh, Janet instead of just scanning. Because if it was just talking about it, she would obviously have been triggered heavily. And he'd be like, here are all the suits, here are all your fucking hockey pucks. You know, try them on, try them on right now. Let's make sure they fit. And then they all put them on, and then, oh, whoops, we got them down to the quantum realm because Modox got us. It's like, again, super convenient. But better. <laughs> like, why not? It's better. Don't, don't just give up when it, you're Always confronted with up. a difficult writing problem. Uh, question from Ola. How do you choose who to invite for certain EFAPs? Also, hi, canine. Hello there. Uh, it's usually going to be just my familiarity with their work and what I know they're invested in. Last thing I want to do is invite someone like ER to a Star Wars only discussion. You know, it'll actually kill him or Marvel only. But if Cora's coming up, or um, <laughs> Glass Onion for some reason really pissed him off, <laughs> it might be a, a Ryan Johnson thing. Who knows? But yeah, uh, I just want to make sure I have the right people for the right stuff so that they have the passion and interest to talk as opposed to they sit there being like, well, don't really know anything about this. For like eight hours, that would be very awkward. So you try and you try and uh, marry things with other things. Mm. Want to do? Have any of you guys seen the Venture Bros? Best writing I've seen in an anim adult animated series. I have. Uh, I've seen a little bit of it, uh, a lot of clips and stuff like that, and I do indeed really enjoy it. I think there's a lot of cleverness and interesting stuff that they do. I haven't seen it's one it, of those series that I would sure. like to kind of watch from beginning to end sometime. Uh, da, ba, da, ba, da. Is it just me? Why are the Kree a threat to them? Is that attack? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's, I guess so, but it seems like the scrolls have pretty crazy science fiction tech as well. Yeah. Um, don't really and get also, much apparently, on that. they're super strong, and I, I don't recall that the Kree are like super strong necessarily, like inherently. You know, I guess they they, they got to be kind of right because remember when uh Jude Law got like blasted 
away by mm -hmm. Captain Marvel didn't really hurt him. So I guess, yeah, he, he but, but I mean, if they're about as strong as each other, then it has to be their tech. But it seems like for his technical, you know, d d weren't, didn't they needed to do like physical, like spoken tests to figure them out. They couldn't just use a scanner, which seems if they don't have an ability to do that, then it seems like, you know, for as, as, as good as you uh, ought to be at deception, then that's, that's it. And especially now that they have those memory flooper things, <laughs> you know, now that test is worthless. Uh, one movie, one TV show, and one game you can delete from your memory because they were so bad you want to forget. Oh, and then they've asked, like, what would you say for the reverse? Also high ranks. Hello. Um, oh. So basically, experience, getting to experience a game again for the first time and just wanting to not have, have it in your memory again. banks. Um. A game that I want to forget. Hmm. So my thing for wanting to forget because I want to experience it again would be Soma. That, that's definitely up there. Um, Bioshock might be one for me. Uh, Sinuous Sacrifice is up there. Uh, Hellblade. Uh, Lord of the Rings movies would be pretty cool to experience, especially in theaters. Absolutely. Oh, I would love to watch those again for the first time. That would be incredible. And then TV show is just easy. Buffy and Angel, I'd like to go through them for the first time again. Uh, would be fun on the bun. It would be nice to go through Breaking Bad again. Having, you know, known nothing about it. Um, yeah, thinking about... Um, as for the reverse, I genuinely don't know. I don't, there's like, not even much if I, I wanted, hated it, I yeah. don't know why I would want to get rid of it. Yeah, they said video games, right? Uh, all three. Video games, TV show, and movie. Um, I, I don't think I can think of one for video games, because typically if a video game's really that bad, I don't finish it. Um... For movies and stuff, I don't know. It's valuable, especially in our line of work, to have a yeah. have an idea of things being bad yeah, and why it's almost they're like bad. If it's a particularly bad thing, at least you've now got it in your library so that you reference it. Like that's your yep. that's at least the small amount of reprieve you get from having to see that shit sort of thing. And if anything, yeah, the like... worse it is, the more useful it can be to be aware of it and the with mm. what we do, considering that, especially if something is like a particular kind of bad. It's mm. use, uh, useful as a reference, and it might be bad in ways other things aren't bad. And that's just useful to be aware of. Um, yeah, I just don't have one for that. Yeah, I'm, I'm legitimately not sure. I wish I could give a better answer, but I'd, I'd have to think about it more. Um, I don't really know. Also high ranks. Hello, hi. Jedi Brooks, woo, yeah, baby, that's what I've been waiting for. That's what it's all about, woo. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Stuff. Uh, as someone who wants to make videos on YouTube, what advice would you give them if they feel discouraged that it's already so saturated with content that there isn't even a point in trying? Hi, Rags. Hello. Um, while it may be difficult, I think discovery is one of the biggest issues for an up-and-coming creator who wants to get into it. Um, fear not, because we see smaller creators who are basically nobodies uh, have their stuff get discovered build small communities. Sometimes the algorithm hits you right. You hit the right topic at the right time and it takes off. And if you enjoy it, um, you know, along the way, then it helps to, you know, it helps to keep you going. It is definitely not impossible. And there is a lot of room because remember, yeah, there's a lot of content creators, but there's a lot of people who are watching. Um, so just, you know, consider, uh, consider going for it, even if, you feel like it's a very, very crowded pond with a lot of fish. And trust me, everybody felt when they started that it's pretty saturated. Yep. Like, oh man, look at me here in 2012 trying to make some YouTube videos in this incredibly saturated market. And it's like, and 10 years later, it's like so much more saturated. But the thing is, in 10 years from now, it'll be so much more saturated again. If YouTube's still around, who knows what will happen in 10 years. Besides, people start and rise to prominence all the time. You know, mm -hmm. um, I'm like four hours back, but my uncle lived in Moscow, Idaho, and we always pronounced it in the Russian place Moscow. Yeah, the only other pronunciation I've heard is Moscow, but yeah, yeah, it seems to be the American one though. 
There you go. I read how the show ended. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah, well, we, <laughs> had, a while. we had a great time. Um, you guys need to stop sleeping on Bluey. I watched an I've episode heard... or two of Bluey. It's a very quaint little kid show. Um, I think it's yeah, fine. I've seen clips going around here and there, and it looks, you know, it looks not bad. It seems like a fun show. Yeah, I've seen a few clips, and some of them have been really funny. That's a hyper-popular Australian export. Uh, yeah, everyone knows about Bluey, and one thing that's in, it, it definitely, it, it, it gives me like Phineas and Ferb vibes, where the people who make it realize that parents have to watch this too, so they have to throw in stuff there, so, you know, for the parents to enjoy, mm -hmm. so that they'll want to, you know, watch it with their kids. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you could only erase one MCU property from the canon, which would it be and why? Uh... I'd be either Loki or Multiverse. Mm. Probably. Maybe, Probably Loki. maybe, oh, Loki. Fuck, maybe, maybe Endgame. Like, try again, you know? <laughs> Don't yeah, the thing about up. erasing Endgame That's is like, what does that look really. like at that point? It's like, do we get another one or? Mm. Well, yeah, I, I assume it almost bakes in that you try again. <laughs> Because if there's no end game, then I, I don't know what that means for... Because Loki can be just forward. disappeared and that's that. Yep. Yeah. Um, also, if you could erase one character from the MCU canon, who would it be and why? Um... I really dislike Scarlet Witch now. Pretty awful. Uh, I, I really dislike that character. Um, so she might be the one that I'd get rid of. Uh, hmm. I'm trying to think about other ones that'll, like, have massive consequences for the MCU. Because someone would be like, Captain Clark, Marvel's like, eh, not really. Oh, yeah, Gaia, she's high up on the list of, uh, you gotta go. <laughs> You're just causing too much damage by existing in this universe. Um, like I said, I don't think Captain Marvel would be, like, that high on that list, honestly. I feel like you can still do stuff with her. Like, she's boring, um, and she's overpowered, but there's still potential. Whereas, I think That's Scarlet Witch, it's over. With Gaia them. can't exist. I'm fine with there being an MCU's equivalent for what is essentially Superman. And mm -hmm. we could have done something with it, yeah, for sure. Well. I mean, they still can. It's not like she's... Well, the Secret Invasion deals a lot of damage. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm just trying to think of who else would be a character that's got to go. Uh, hmm. No, I'm a... Yeah, Scarlet Witch, actually. Yeah, that's fine. Rags can invade me secretly. It's something, to, it's something to think about. It wouldn't be a secret, though. Uh, Disbrew's done the Lord's work in reviewing Secret Invasion, so very invested in EFAP's take. Well, you got ten hours of it. Enjoy. Um, Mola, can I sample your voice for music? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, no problem with that. that sounds fun. Rambo Soap does that, so... Rags, a new anime is coming to Adult Swim. I hope it's... It, I, have, I have hope because it's directed by Shinichiro Watanabe. He adds some actual uh, stories and characters to the medium. I don't know who that is, but uh, I hope it's good. Yeah. Um, Moller, if you continue your Star Trek journey, follow RLM's advice and skip season one of TNG. Purely subjective, but DS9 is my favorite show ever. I've heard good things about Deep Space Nine. I don't think I'll be doing any skipping. I want to get everything. And um, when it's a show like TNG, I'm not going to watch season one and be like, man, this is so bad, I'm not going to continue when, it, when it's this many people that I trust immensely telling me it's one of the best shows ever. I'll be like, okay, so I just got to get to the good stuff. And remember, his, he likes that Buffy stuff. And it, yeah, which I has more than one bad season. Great. Oh, oh my goodness. Um, would you rather be forced to accurately defend Hassan's intelligence or any random Doomer take? <laughs> any random Doomer take. Yeah, I don't want to have to defend Hassan's intelligence, that's not fair. Yeah, I could, I could probably defend any random Doomer take. I think Somewhat. so, yeah. Downside to not having any, to ever, sorry, downside to not having to ever poop. You can no longer use the excuse, ew, no, that's where poop comes from. Why would that be? In what well, if, scenario would you use that as an excuse for something? And if everybody wasn't pooping anymore, then that wouldn't even exist as a thing. Yeah, exactly. If everybody, it would just adjust to being normal. Like it would just be this, this weird vestigial. Well, just like people having two arms temple. is normal, you know? 
You don't. Yeah. Um, hello, everyone, except Rags. Wow. About hi. Mm. <laughs> All right. Well. Uh, for later, why does Fury even collect the DNA? Like, what is his goal with all of that? Also, yum yum ooh. Mm. <laughs> his goal with it uh, was was to just have it, I guess. I think so. Yeah, actually, what was? It? Did he have a stated goal with that? I think I think it was just to have it. That's I really normal and cool. How if you, yeah, imagine you find out it's like yeah. So Fury just got my blood and a bunch of other people's blood, and now someone's running around with my brain. powers. Uh, like, I mean, again, it just feels... It, there's something about that. I mean, it's the thing about the scrolls; They were designed to be villains. You know, like, in terms of their power set and everything. Um, I mean, it is kind of weird. Imagine Mantis sees it's like, oh, she's, like, got my DNA. Oh, you know? It feels like, uniquely cool. um, then, gross, doesn't it? It Well, I mean, it is. In the same... Well, it's just the same as the shapeshifters themselves being, like, a violation. Which is something that it feels like the show doesn't fully... Uh, got. You know, guys still just walking around having co-opted somebody's identity, but it won't matter whenever we see her again, if we ever see her again. We'll just be like, yeah, that's her. It's not like that's someone else. Who she could be endangering, potentially. Like, yeah. imagine if someone mistakes the real person for Gaia. Uh, wow, I bet in five hours you're gonna tell me that tattoos and magic rings aren't generic, lol. Or genetic. I think genetic. the cap, oh, yeah, DNA, <laughs> cap DNA should come with a shield. Also high rack. <laughs> Hello. He had That'd the ring! They were on his fingers! I do like the idea that you, you just did it to Chris Evans that the shield just forms. Like, yeah, his vibranium <laughs> too. Uh, you don't have to skip around with DS9. It's alright, I don't mind seeing some bad episodes of a thing. It's okay. It's alright. It's okay. Wings Quarter I mean, of the House Day. of the Dragon had a bad episode. It did. Wings quote of the day to chat. Imagine making fun of someone with a better boxing record than you. Matter of fact, I, mean, I got a better boxing yeah. record than Conor McGregor. Because he's got, like, 100% wins, is that the idea? I guess technically he does. Alrighty. Yeah, I mean, he did beat Boogie, but, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, hi, Mubes. The longest you've streamed a game is Elden Ring, approximately 50 hours. Will you stream a game where the campaign is just as long? A real chonker? I suppose it'll just depend on if the right game comes along in that way. Maybe. I streamed a hell of a lot of uh, Resident Evil 4 Remake. I don't think it was up to 50, but it was, it was pretty high. It's like 30 hours yeah, you're playing that like every day. I quite liked that game. I played that a lot. <laughs> Me too. It was a fun boy. Didn't Fury have a wife in Winter Soldier? Uh, possibly. I'd have to check the dialogue. I remember people mentioning yeah. it. Yeah. Recall. Sam Jackson IRL is basically Sam Jackson's character in Django. He'll endure anything that he has to to be on the side of the boss man to get his paycheck. Alright, I don't think so. <laughs> like, I don't know if you remember the fucking <laughs> character in Django Unchained. No, not Django Unchained. Wait, what am I referencing? What's Django Unchained? Are you... Django Unchained is what? the film was Django the Unchained. Yeah, remember? It is called Unchained, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Django Unchained. Sorry, I just yes. myself. <laughs> Were you thinking of, like, the, the Hateful Eight or something? No, for a second there, I thought it was, like, a comic spin-off or something. I think you thought Unchained just seemed like it wasn't actually the name. It was just called yeah. Django or something. Yeah, I, I, only I mean things Maybe you were thinking that, it was, yeah. like, <laughs> Rango Unchained or something. Rango Unchained. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Uh, love the idea of a subversive group impersonating government officials, but every person they unlock as an asset is a new viewpoint and life experience the group has to reckon with among themselves. That sounds interesting. Why would you do that? Yeah, the, and, that, and that was never an idea that would have even been entertained. It's just like, yeah, you got their memories, chill. Now you just know all of their things. Did, didn't you love the scene where Guy's like, oh my god, this man, he has a family that he cares about. Yeah, <laughs> no fucking shit. And that's the thing, uh, you can you can make some really interesting payoffs of like, you know, four of them are already absorbed other officials and they're they've they've come to terms and everything and they get a new guy. He's he's like absorbing it and they're all just sort of looking at him like still uh we still good? The guy's mm. like, uh, yeah, of course. Like, he says, Yeah, no, it's chill, but then in reality Yeah, because they can never quite know, process. can they? They'd be like They can never know for each other. That's right. It's like the only thing that they have no assurances about. It seems like each an other. obvious great way to intertwine the paranoia of everyone thinking who was scrolls, but then also even the, the scrolls. scrolls are paranoid about themselves. Yeah. 
But oh well. Oh well. Oh well. The scrolls are almost as bad as Discord moderators. Whoa. Wow. Calm down, okay? Scrolls aren't that bad. Yep, the scrolls give me the exact same vibe of the Bater Bat Batarians. Uh, Batarians. Batarian from Mass, Mass Effect. Effect. Oh, okay. Yeah. I want to sympathize with them, but they make it so very hard. I don't know if you guys want to say anything about that. I don't know anything about Mass Effect. No, they oh, it's do. just the yeah. Batarians are often like antagonistic. Okey um, yeah. Uh, hey, a gang. I'm trying to create reviews on YouTube, but I'm struggling on making my voice sound decent. Any help? Love the content. Hmm. Um, I don't know how exactly you do it. I know you can train your voice. A lot of the times, it's nothing more than just paying attention to your voice as you say things. Because a lot of the times when you talk, because you're so used to it, you don't think about how you're sounding, but sometimes conscious effort really can be enough to put you in the zone to just sound differently. But other than that, I don't know, like, any actual techniques. Um, yeah, like, there's going to be YouTube videos that tutorialize all of this stuff. There's going to be professionals that do it, and there's obviously voice actors that have to do it, or rather, they are paid to do it. Um, so... There's, there's going to be better advice they could probably give about, like, actual uh, sort of physical things you can do and how you can practice and what... But, but, but like, you know, the, the easiest, most straightforward way, I assume, is just practice when you're on your own, just doing some shit, just start doing voices, feel how your throat is, and uh, maybe try and, you know, chip away at changing it over time. Uh, you can never go wrong with better articulation as well. Yes. Yeah. Those words coming through clearer is always going to be a plus. I imagine if you're really concerned about how you feel, one thing you can do is you can maybe look around where you live for a like a like a singing coach of a voice coach, like one of those singing instructors. Um, they're probably more common than you think, considering all the churches and the choirs and art centers and. Uh, repertory theaters and whatnot. So maybe if you if you or if you just look in the want ads or something, the Craigslist or the you know the the paper or however you find people like that, you might be able to find someone, call them up and say, you know, hey, can you help me? I, I'm looking to record my voice online and I want to change how I sound. Is there anything you could teach me technique wise? And maybe we could have a couple lessons. And maybe that's the way to go. Uh. Hey everyone, Animal of the Week is a fox, but not an ordinary fox, a melanistic Ooh. fox. Melanistic is basically the opposite of albino. Yep. Albino. Uh, stay cool, y'all. Hey, oh, the, yeah, we, we, there's melanistic squirrels that are like all black. Um, Very but, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah look at him. Neat. That's neat. You'd see him Very show neat. up in like an alien planet almost. Almost, because you're like, you just... A little bit, a little bit. Off. That's why I wonder, like, why you grab stuff like this for a uh, movie. Just stuff oh, that people just, aren't as familiar yeah, with, have, like a real animal that nobody's heard of. Or yeah, we just typically like... see. Yeah, it was like this weird. Uh, grab a real bludgy black goo creature on like a beach that someone was looking at, and then someone else was like, "Oh yeah, this is a blah 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 blah." And I was just like, "That's like perfect for an alien thing." Oh yeah, you. I mean, how many sea creatures are just instant? Like, oh yeah, it feels like an yeah, alien. every new to branch and all that. Yeah. Uh, I can't believe I'm saying this, but Twilight is a better love story. Genuinely, Twilight is more romantic and emotionally satisfying. Uh, probably. Probably. I mean, if you watched all the Twilight movies, you, you'd probably feel something at the end, right? Certainly <laughs> hope so. Uh, anyone here has seen Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes? It's an animated show that handles Ultron, Kang, and Secret Invasion miles better than the MCU did. Right, not. I haven't seen it. I have not seen that, no. I can buy that they handled it better than Secret Invasion, though. Yeah, I can believe it. Hi, I'm gay actor Michael Douglas, and did you know the oh, premise hi. of 007 is basically, what if there was a straight British man? Oh, this is a reference, <laughs> is it, to, uh... The wait no this was thing. before no wait oh yeah because it's like after the when, when did we get that comment it was from well that was during the that was the efap the anniversary who said it um some guy what it was what if i finished or i he no he's he no was it was like, ymas every, that said everything's it. 
Everything's a what if? It was YMS. It wasn't the anniversary. Oh, was it? Oh, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm confusing it with something else. Which was still Damn. after the Secret Invasion stream, I think, wasn't it? Or was it not? Hmm. In any case, gay actor Michael Douglas, hello. How you doing? <laughs> yeah, um, hey. You get into that watch together, watch together goes on the internet, you go onto the internet, sharks on the internet, our shark, Jaws EFAP, I'm gay actor Michael Douglas. We've, we've read that one out like three different times. They really want uh, Jaws EFAP movies, I guess. Who knows, maybe one day. I haven't watched anything MCU related since Endgame. I feel quite happy with that decision. Everything's been garbo since. I mean, yeah, you've not missed out, really. Don't worry about it. I started watching Indiana Jones movies because of the Dial of Destiny stream. I recently started Last Crusade, but so far Raiders is my favorite. Didn't like Temple all that much, but it was still good. Fair enough. I really like Temple. I really like Temple of Doom. It's my second favorite. Hi, Rags. Hello. And all. Hello. Would Secret Invasion Hi. be improved if the Don had become Super Scroll? He would then have the power to break Danvers' hand. Full circle. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. He would have had his kin moment. He wouldn't, he wouldn't. He wouldn't, though. That. He wouldn't, though. He's a better person than she is. By yeah. a considerable You would want to let her know that she's strayed from the path. That he would, he would get it back on. That's right. Uh, Secret Invasion sucks you when even the shills at New Rockstars make a 50 minute video about everything wrong with the finale. What a time to be alive. Really? Yeah. New Rockstars are the ones that do the whole, like, every secret you missed and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that's them. Wow. Hey, they... What did they call Again, that secret... video? The thing is, by the finale, it was just the safe, accepted opinion that it was terrible, which it was. Yeah, but it was, by then, it was everybody was ready to say that. <laughs> Dude, like... Because the video apparently is called Secret Invasion Episode 6 Breakdown Easter Eggs and Details You Missed. And it's like, do they just... Is it like filled with passive aggression, the video? Maybe. I remember with... Oh, they've got a video called What the Fuck Happened with Secret Invasion. There you go. And it's got Drax oh, on yeah. the front. It was safe. It was real safe. Yeah, that one you're not going to get in trouble with anybody for making fun of. Hmm. Meanwhile, right now, I think it's more in favor to say that Ahsoka is cool. But by the time the season's over, everyone will be saying shit. Yeah, because they're not gonna do anything. And I'm, I'm just uh, people get it so sad with what they do with Thrawn. It's gonna be. I think so. That will probably tip them over the edge. Uh, bum, ba -da -bum, bum, bum. When even they are biting the hand at feet. Well, they want to go with like the hype and the fun. And there are some channels. Uh, Alt Shift X, I'd say, is one of them where. He was trying to do what would be considered absolutely an objective breakdown of the episodes of Game of Thrones as they came out. Like, objective in the sense of, tell people what happened, how does this relate to other things that have happened, and what can we assume that might happen as a result of this. Like, nothing, really ever opinions. And even he was, like, struggling like crazy on the last few episodes, like, because everything was so absurd. Like, I don't blame people necessarily for that. Though, um, you know, New Rock, new rock Stars have never... Been that interested in the channel. I don't know if they do good wicks or not, really. Um, it's basically a Monty Python movie. Doom Media on Barbie, out of context. Well, that's not, that doesn't make he sense. He had some interesting takes. Monty Python's um, funny, though. Yeah, yeah, Monty Python is funny. <laughs> Barbie movie was Barbie not is funny. like Monty Python. I feel like that's, that's just uh, not quite not quite the case, but all right. I feel like that's yeah, not true. Yeah, I don't agree with that. Yeah. Uh, Captain America 1 was about a skinny guy who just wanted to help his mate stay safe. Steve Rogers was a good man and a good American. Yes, he was. That was boring. Bravo to you. Ooh, who want to tell stories about space aliens with all of the Avengers' powers? Man, that first Captain America movie's downright quaint. Yep. Yeah, it's just a solid, like, superhero movie. Hi, Rags. Hello. Hi, Fringy. Hey. Hi, Mola. Hello. Hi, everyone. I speak for everybody. A reminder to watch Blackberry. It's good. Very well. Uh, I, I, yeah, we'll see. I was about to say I will, and it's like, <laughs> uh, wait, hold on. <laughs> Don't go saying that. We'll see. Today is my birthday, long man. Been watching EFAP since the first stream went live, opposite of the tradition, but here's a gift from me to you. Um, thank you very much. Glad you've enjoyed it all. Hi, Wags. Hello. Hi, Moolah and Frongy. Yo. And all the rest. I'm embarking on a pilgrimage to E every fap. 
I'm up to 22 so far. Love you guys and praise Spider Dawn. Praise B. Praise B. Uh, Mola, who is this Frungi guy? Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Frungi? His name's Fringy. That's completely different. Fringled. Mm hmm. I don't That's even totally know who different Frungi name. is. Yeah, who is that? Old AVGN episodes are so cozy, especially for the this gay actor. Does EFAP have any fond AVGN memories? Uh, not really. I never watched no, him. No, I never watched him. Watched him a bit. I have but, a lot uh, of respect for him and what he does and how long he's been doing it. And But I, I just never I never watched him. I think my fondest memory is it's going to be a little bit strange because it's not going to be quite what I expect, but is the video he put out explaining that he's not interested in watching Ghostbusters 2016. He loves the original Ghostbusters and he's not interested in seeing whatever the hell they're cooking up. And it pissed off the whole internet or pissed off certain parts of the internet. I think uh, he was uh, labeled a misogynist because he's not watching it just because women are in it. When he couldn't have been more explicit, he was just like, this isn't for me. This isn't marketed for me. I love Ghostbusters. I don't want to see this as part of Ghostbusters, so I won't be watching it. I won't be reviewing it. And that's it. Which, by the way, I don't care. And if anyone, anyone would do that with anything, I don't care. It's fine. Like, to be angry at that is so strange. Well, to be angry that someone would just say, I'm not interested. It's like, no. Fuck we have to you. do that all the time. People are like, why don't you guys do an EFAP on and then names all of the popular things that have come out? And it's like, don't care about them. And it's I mean, not because the they're the bad day, necessarily. Every it's person just that... has limited time and limited interest. Yeah, it's not because like, they're bad or good or anything patience. else. We just I mean, individually you have are not gotten interested. You're making a wager, right? You're making a wager with any piece of art that you uh, consume that you're going to enjoy it or get something out of it. And you don't think you are. And that time could be spent on something else. That's totally valid. <laughs> That's just one of the many reasons. It could be that you think you will get yeah. loads out of it, but it's just not it's not happening. There's, there's things again in the mm -hmm. way, or there's just not enough passion for it. There's, there is probably more art that we adore that we've not seen and, and not consumed at all, like, than, than we have, I mean. I mean, we, just with the sheer quantity of creations that have existed throughout all of time. It's like the across three of every us, medium. for all we know, there's like a game on fucking N64 called, like, BattleBots Go, and it would have been our favorite game of all time, all three of us, but we just never played it, no one cared, and that, it's just, yeah. you know? It's like, yeah, that's gonna happen. That's just inevitable. And same goes for stuff like, uh, you know, like, uh, covering Wheel of Time. It's like, sorry, none of... Uh, and it could uh, be that uh, we would all adore the books, and we would despise the series, and it would create some really interesting and fun, insightful conversation about writing, along with entertainment about ripping the show apart, also appreciating a great work in the form of the books, but yeah, just, just didn't happen that way. None of us have uh, an investment in it. Just how it goes. So yeah, that that would be a thing for him that I, I quite enjoyed, because he pissed off so many people somehow just by saying that. Very normal thing. Hey, Rags. Hey! Between BJ Blaskowitz and the Doom Slayer, who is more daddy material purely based on looks? I don't... Uh, well, BJ Blazkowicz is very straight, uh, so I don't think that would work out. I don't think the Doom Slayer even cares, or is I don't know. Those are <laughs> two bad options. I'm gonna go with the Doom Slayer though. There's this this simplicity to him that, in a weird way, I don't know. Uh, look at the origin of the Greek character Orion. This gay actor, known as Michael Douglas, lolled hard when he read it. Origin of Greek character Orion. How how much am I reading here? Or is something. Orion was a handsome giant granted the ability to walk on water by his father Poseidon. He served King Oinopion of Chios as huntsman for a time. He was blinded and exiled from the island after raping the king's daughter, Merope. Okay. Lots of, lots of stories I'm just not familiar with, with good old Greek mythology. Yeah, just not familiar. There's evidence suggesting Sentinel Prime went blind from getting hit in the head by Megatron. It just makes Optimus ten times worse. Lost my ass off. Uh... Oh, talking about like in the Michael Bay Transformers movies about how Optimus is a psychopath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he just executes Sentinel Prime while he's screaming no and down. And, th and that was after he ripped Megatron's head out of his body. You know, like, for just saying, like, you need me, Prime, and he just kills him after he saved his life. Yeah, I think, so I think when they were making that, it's like, this is badass. It's like, no, 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 not quite, no. Dude, he Megatron when he just saved his life. That was so weird. Yeah. I still remember, I was on a train watching that, and I remember just 
fuck am I what? It's it <laughs> I remember people saying it was better than two, and it's like it's about as bad. I think so too. Uh Derpy Snack of the Day, Arabian Sand Boa. Oh well, look at this lad. Yeah. He's a cool looking he's snake. Chunky. Yeah, he's it's he just an like interesting color boy. scheme yeah. and pattern there. He kind of yeah, looks like pixels, Halloween. you know, on his back. They look like pixels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because the individual scales, yeah. Yeah. And a uh, egg of the day, spiral horn egg shark ridge that runs along the outside of an egg in a spiral allows the mother to wedge the egg in crevices of rocks in order to keep them safe until they hatch. Oh. Um, huh. Interesting idea, I guess. That's what they look like. That's that's interesting. Really makes oh. you... Damn, there are some designs in nature that are like, that's a drill. <laughs> you know? Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's like... so cool. I, I'd like to know, I don't know if there's like an easy resource for this, but how much we manage to progress based on actually looking at our own, you know, like the joint, the, the ball uh, joint for like our arms and stuff when they were doing yeah, socket, ball and socket. Yeah. Like when they were, when they were doing autopsies or rather even earlier, just ripping bodies apart and then they see something like that and they're like, whoa, look at this. And like, can we do this with wood or stone or whatever else I want? And like, I, I wonder how many advancements we made wonder. Yeah. You from do, just looking wonder. at biology and being like, oh shit, this is a good idea. <laughs> look at this. Best season ever. Yep, that's what Amelia Clark said about Game of Thrones. Man, and... she just can't catch a break, can she? Well, the fact is, like, she was probably not saying anything too disparaging about Marvel because one, probably told not to, but two, what is like? There's nothing for her to be invested in. Like, not like Daenerys, mm -hmm. where she played her for like ten years or whatever. This is a character that's just like I don't fucking know. Hopefully, it makes yeah. sense. <laughs> Good, right? Yeah, everyone happy? Like, no. You're like, oh. Um, I sniped at RLM stupid Indiana Jones takes like, it's not what characters, it's not the characters people like, it's the idea, and because being awesome is inspiring. Cover RLM, please. Yeah, I don't agree with that. I think Indiana Jones' character is what people love. Um, there's of escapism, course. and of course, like, a sense of adventure, yeah, I, yeah. but I don't think that supersedes the fact that Indy is awesome, and we, we like to see him succeed, because he's a good well, man. Well... People didn't like the bitch, so I is obviously the character has a big part to play. You can't just you can't just replace him with like someone that does the things he does and expect it to just catch on magically. Oh, they've been trying that forever. They just don't, they haven't quite cracked it yet. I chuckled when Rags said old people's knees are bad because we all know how Rags acquired <laughs> that knowledge. Wiggles eyebrows. Well, I just noticed that old people have bad knees. When you get older, your body parts just aren't as they, they just aren't as good. Yeah, no what's more. that about? What's it called? Those those things in your genetics, they're like the edges of cells or whatever that they they wear away your the replicators or whatever. But as soon as we crack that, we kill aging. It's not gonna be an interesting society. Assuming you knew it to be true, what does it mean to be of pure heart if your actions are dubious at best? To be I don't know what your heart to be if you're heart in general. I don't know what that means. From is pure um, could mean it, that you're like really, really good, or pure could mean really, really well, authentic. Is it pure based on your perception of it, or is it based on something beyond you, like the universe itself? Could somebody I believe think... themselves to be pure of heart while being like generally considered pretty bad because they really buy into their own, you know, choices? Hype. Yeah, hype. Right. I, I, I guess you're going to say something. Like yeah, it did. It did sound like you had something. I think that pure of heart is a pretty, it's a pretty broad umbrella sort of catch-all term for inner goodness, where it, you have you have this inner capacity and maybe an inner repressed desire to do the right thing, or there's a virtue inside of you that hasn't been put into a context where it can sort of flourish. I think we go to the Han Solo example, where he has a pure heart in the sense of he did save the i mean he did save the day he he didn't have to come back but he did you know he was put into a situation and he met the right person and found the right cause that really allowed for his inner virtuousness to sort of come out um so i i think that's the kind of thing people say when they have when they say pure heart 
um, like uh, deep, like deep down, you're a good person. Uh, even if superficially you aren't, even if you do some dubious things, um, there's a lot of things that you simply won't do. Well, maybe that's one way to look at it. There are, if you're a pure heart, there are just things that you will not do. Um, so, I don't know. Hello, lads. I have an anime recommendation for you. It's called Goblin Slayer. It's about an, in an adventurer that only takes contracts about, you guessed it, slaying goblins. It's a short... Or it is short at 12 episodes. Hello, Rags, and Fringy is a bird. Hi. Well, I, uh, I wish yeah, him that's, luck that's getting opinion. all those goblins. I hope he gets them. Yeah. I have heard about it a couple times, can. but uh, not got a huge interest in that one raid. Nah. You could have revelations where an evil politician actually has good reason that only the terrorists know about via their powers, or one member gets too sympathetic to a particular target, etc. No, no, boring. No, we're not doing any of that. We're going to introduce the idea, then maybe talk about it once or twice later in a vague way. About That's it. pretty cool. What I've really noticed with the Disney it's stuff, easy. and obviously you guys have as well, is the they'll introduce some stuff in like episode one or two or whatever. And you're like, okay, I could see it could go this way, this way, this way. It's like, no, 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 no. no that, that we're already like halfway through the whole story now. We're already nearly done. What do you mean? It's like there's, nothing's going to happen for a few episodes or the... We'll just do the thing we already did, or introduce something that's easily solvable that just takes up an hour. Like, so little happens at all. It's um, really sad and lame, and, and I don't know what the motivation behind it is exactly, because, you know, Secret Invasion changed a shit ton if it would be taken as definitively canon going forward, but it probably won't. It's not that they're not willing to change stuff, they just don't have any stories to tell. That's like the conclusion you always reach. Or the, the, none of the people who are telling these stories actually have like a genuine investment beyond scrolls. They could be the people that you think are not scrolls. There you go. We did it. Have y'all heard the music in the first Blue Beetle trailer? I swear when a title card shows up at the end, it sounds like it's Batwoman's theme. Um, I don't remember. And nobody remembers uh, Blue Beetle anymore. <laughs> it's gone. Yeah, it's already, it's already, already gone. gone. Already Give it a few more weeks and out. people won't know yeah. if it actually came out or not. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, hi, Max. Has it made 100 million? Yeah. yeah, just over. But remember, it costs about that much, so it's doomed to lose money. Recently happened upon the word circumlocution. I think this word fits some of the so called content creators you've covered well. Circumlocution? Sir oh, talking in a circle. Oh, oh is that what that means? Oh, to, cool. To, yeah, uh, well, to, no, to talk around. Sorry, circum is around. Uh, to talk around something. Um, oh, yep. I'd say that's locutus applies. for the one who speaks. Like if you speak, your uh, TNG reference there. Uh, and circum, which is around. Uh, circumference is the you know distance around something like a circle or a circumcision, as you know, to cut around. But uh, yeah, circumlocution I assume means to talk around something instead of addressing it. You have favorite songs by Trey Parker and Matt Stone. I like Montage and Pearl Harbor Sucks. Uh, so the uh, Book of Mormon has several really great songs. Uh, I'm not sure which one I would pick uh, for my favorite from that that uh, musical. I quite hmm. love the I'm um, not sure what I'd pick. South Park movie where they have their big song where all, all the other songs previously well, start to song. match up. Yep, yep, I love that. So good. Uh, and also, I mean, I really like, uh, I like Uncle Fucker. Yeah. That's a great song. Funny as hell. <laughs> um, and Blame Canada is really good. Uh, that was the one that got nominated for, uh, the Academy Awards, but that's not my favorite from that. I think, yeah, La Resistance. When, I love in musicals when all of the songs come together at the end. And they all just line up. It's, it's cool. real cool. And, um, I'm just thinking about, uh, what other, what other ones would be. Uh, do you, do you remember, it, is, I don't know if we'd call it like a complete song, but it was in the, the musical episode that they did around the time Book of Mormon came out, where it was, uh, the, the, the musical, <laughs> do you remember the musical that Randy was writing? Um, oh, really? The, the, oh, it was, it was because he, he went to see Wicked, and, um, then he found out that the, the musicals are filled with subliminal messages that convince men's wives to give them blowjobs. 
And so then nice. he starts writing his own musical and he doesn't understand he doesn't understand subtext. So the song is just about, you know, wouldn't it be great to have like Oh damn, I can't remember what the song was called, but it was something about like a blowjob on football Sunday. <laughs> like that was just what the song was about. And it's a pretty good song. Uh like the part that you hear, but you don't get to hear it completely. So that's another one. And yeah, I really like the montage song. Yeah. Uh, the helicopters shown aren't even Russian. Those are American Black Hawks with rocket rockets strapped to them, attacking an American convoy in England. Yeah, it's just funny. The whole thing was funny. I mean, <laughs> the whole thing. I mean, the fact that it would even be like what, what, what is it? Russian helicopters in in England? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, how did you organize this? Uh, so stupid. And there'd be scroll bodies all over the place. Yeah, they that's crazy. How do you ignore that? How do you ignore the fact there will be scroll bodies everywhere? Like that's just one of those blatantly obvious things that surely you had to remember. Nope. Oh, but I guess uh, not. action scene doesn't oh. matter. Like the creator said, no emotion in action. Uh... Everyone always says Mola, you're gay, but no one ever asks Mola why are you gay? Why not? Why not? Yeah. Why it goes why both not? ways. She is for the EFAP length, EFAP lads. No problemo. How the hell did they manage to get DNA from Ebony Moore? His first incarnation was jettisoned into space, and the second one was dusted. Um, I hate to say this, I really do, but he was he was hit with a, one of those things that he sent flying at Doctor Strange and uh, Wong. Like it's it like scrammed him, and so a bit of blood must have a droplet fell out onto the floor of uh, New York City or whatever. It was it was perfect and and. You didn't, you didn't see it, but if you look in the background, you can clearly see Fury and a bunch of scrolls like, mopping the floors and finding every last bit of blood on the floor. So there you go. Uh, it's very good. Very well done. The Super Duper Soldier Serum. Yep. Dude, remember when damaging the Soldier Serum in Falcon Winter Soldier felt like a huge fuck-up? Like a big deal? Yeah. Yeah. Tiny compared to the stuff they've done. We were so happy thinking that we would never see it again. I thank God. It's a problem that there's already this many, but hopefully they close the door on it. <laughs> you need to set up a team of Zemo, Walker, and uh, the Don, and they need to go around executing all of the problem plot lines. Every time something starts happening, yeah. it's nonsense, they need to execute it straight away. 100%. Yeah, do it. I bet they're going to have Rhodey wheelchair bound from the muscle atrophy and rad exposure, mentoring Ironheart in Armor Wars. I don't know what the fuck they're going to be doing next. No clue. I think they've seen the response from everybody, <laughs> so they can still change it to the he was only scrollified recently. They, they could They're going to try that. and downplay it as much as possible, I think. As much as the director has said it was from Civil War, uh, they could still change that in universe. And everyone right, fucking yeah. hated that decision. So. It's amazing how bad this show is, also high fringy. Hey. Disney did it. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Nobody expects the secret. Invasion. Oompa Loompa Doompa Dee Doo. I cannot think of a riddle for you, so I will go and milk a rhino, mutually rago, and a fringo. Oh. Can't wait for Riri to tell Rhodey how hard her life is. Yep. Uh, we got plenty of shit to come, I'm sure. Gaia has all of Drax's skills, could impersonate Drax at any point, and brainwash him so he doesn't even remember that she did it. Gaia is an existential threat to Drax. Existential threat to everybody. He needs to be stopped. I think Galactus would fear her. They don't realize how much damage they've done with Rhodey, the most underutilized character in the MCU IMO. Scroll Rhodey knows about time travel. Yeah, whatever. Who cares? Fuck around with anything. Nobody's a, really a character that anyone cares about. It's all just superheroes flying around. Greetings, y'all. Enjoy the suffering of Secret Invasion. Still catching up. After a year, I'm on 162. Wish me luck. Also as a peace offering. Hi, Rags. Oh, hello. <laughs> 162 in a year. Well, I guess you'll be caught up in another year. Close enough, anyway. That's right. Don't give up. You can do it. Uh, hand on Amelia's throat. Harder, daddy. Wait, what? Oh, I, I mean, you know, if if you like girls with Drax arms, that's, you know, that's, if that's your thing, that's fine. Uh, my actors don't need to bring it on the action days. The fight choreography are just mar 
Mathatrons I can sleepwalk through. So fuck anyone unfortunate to work with this actual tampon. Yeah, not not the kind of thing you'd want to hear from your director, I don't think. Nope. And uh, that's the final message of Ooh, wow. oh! the secret invasion EFAP. Thank wow. you so much for your very kind donations and messages. Um, we've got a few more episodes we need to catch up on, so you can expect them every Wednesday. And you'll start seeing Ahsoka popping out of episodes two. Thank you all very much. For now, though, we shall see you next time. Oodles. Yeah, we will see you later, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.